Welcome to Cinema Savants. He's Todd Vandenberg. I'm Rob Steele, and I'm going to start by explaining why I don't actually like telling people to get better. Because I started the show last week by telling Luke Perry, you know, I know you're you're sick, you're in a coma, this this sucks, get better. This is why I don't tell people that, because he died this week, which I think he sucks. He did. Um, but actually, this was the, you know, where it's March now, but it's only the first real week where we've had a lot of celebrity deaths. Usually, you know, about once a month, we have a group of them. We're three months in, right. and <clears throat> granted, we had four this week. Uh, one I found out about Lace last night. We had Luke Perry, right. uh, Jan Michael Vincent from from Airwolf. I don't know that he was in anything else of significance. Uh, Damnation Alley, the movie. But anyway. Okay. I know him from Airwolf, which I loved. I thought it was a great show, even if it was a ripoff of Blue Thunder, but somehow had a better helicopter. Yeah. Um, Keith Flint of Prodigy, which right. I know is not TV, it's movies, but or music, but still – um, and last night, Marshall Brodeen, um, who was a magician, who and he was on TV. He was actually very popular. If you ever watched WGN, uh, he was Wizzo the Wizard on on the Bozo Show. Oh, I didn't uh, recognize him, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And he also did. Uh, and I know you're going to remember this because you're old enough. Uh, WGN would occasionally show a commercial about this had a magician who would sell you this deck of cards that would teach you magic tricks. <laughs> Uh, which was, if you see the commercial, if you see the commercial now, you'll go, I remember that because I had forgotten it until I saw this last night and went, I do remember that. It's terrifying, kind of. Uh, that was him. <laughs> wow. That's, that kind of goes under the category of minor celebrity, but to the people who it's knew him, still. cared, his, yeah, his, his death is, is just as bad. So that sucks. Yeah. I mean, I never put Marshall Brodeen together with Wizzo the Wizard because Wizzo had such goofy ass makeup. <laughs> If you've mm. never seen Wizzo on Bozo, he had this big <laughs> Raleigh fingers, handlebar, curly mustache, but it was drawn on with eyeliner. <laughs> That's perfect. So, yeah, I never put him together with anything else. Um, and here's a segue for you. Speaking of things that are dead. Sorry, I don't have a better segue for that. Uh, California federal judge has finally ruled that VidAngel did, in fact, violate copyright a lot. Uh, we did this story initially when the lawsuit started, what, like a, two years ago, I think? Uh, VidAngel was a video streaming service that took movies and cut out the naughty words and removed the sex scenes. <clears throat> and they claimed they could do it because they bought the DVDs and edited it themselves. Yeah, that doesn't work. You, you, you're No, no, you were just really so not allowed to do that. <laughs> Wow. Otherwise, yeah. we'd be showing movie clips on our show and we're not. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was amused that the uh, the end of the article said that they haven't figured out how much they're going to find the company yet. Well, but to shut them down forever. Oh, oh, yeah. They're they're being shut down, but they're also getting fined. Yeah. Uh, somewhere between nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars and one hundred and fifty two million dollars. Well, hopefully it's about triple whatever they've made and i don't well mean, i mean vid angel reportedly only has 2.4 million dollars at all <clears throat> well then they can chop up videos of christian movies and keep on selling them and keep in that or cutting take. christ out of all the christian movies it's funny how the how you know little <laughs> things like for private use only just escapes their attention it, it, it's, it's, right it's in big letters yeah a bunch of morons FBI warning. Better people. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I, <laughs> that was not ironic, by the way. I, I just work here. Um, and let's see. Another thing that, well, it's not dead yet, but it's working on it. Uh, Arrow of the CW Network and DC Comics fame uh, is returning next season for 10 episodes, and that's it. Uh, just the, the 10 episodes at the beginning of the fall to wrap up all the storylines, and that's the end of Arrow. Which a lot of people think should have happened after season two, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, season three was good. Four and five were a little bit better. And I'll admit, even I've stopped watching at this point. And I was a big proponent of the show. Um, I never 
Got into Arrow, and none of the DC TV shows, the live action shows, have really hooked me. Even though, in a lot of ways, that I, I I understand that they're better than the movies, but that's only because so many of the movies are awful. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, but ev- every one I've tried, there's been some moment which is so absolutely ridiculously awful, which we've talked about, like in the in the in the vein of Superman ducking when someone throws a gun at him, you know that kind of thing. It's like, no, I'm done. If you're not smart enough to figure out how to write that scene. I, I don't need to watch this show. The whole show is trash. So I don't know if Arrow ever had that moment, but I was afraid it was going to. So why invest time just to realize, oh, there's 17 hours gone, and I'm not going to watch anymore. So I'm know, sad. I- Arrow is good. It had a, it, seven years show. is a good run. That's a very long run. That's a that's realistically that's an astounding run. Not because it's Arrow, but just because it's television. I mean, uh, most shows don't make it. Period. Because they they die in the yeah. pilot stage and on and on and on. So yeah, that's a terrific run. Well, I mean, they had only planned out five years because he was on the island for five years, which gives us five years worth of flashbacks that ended two seasons ago. So. <laughs> Anyway, other th- uh, it seems like they're trying to do a little better with the movies. They're except, try- trying. <laughs> except, uh, Suicide Squad 2, which is yes. coming out a lot sooner than anyone wants it to. Uh, Will Smith, we mentioned last week, not going to be in, in, in this. But Deadshot Will, they're replacing Will Smith with Idris Elba, which... I love. I think that's awesome. Part of me thinks... That sounds really good, except it has to be an except. Um, They also announced what characters are going to be in the Suicide Squad this time, because it's not it's not like the Justice League where you've got Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman always there. Yeah. Um, Suicide Squad had a rotating thing. And this time, (laughs) oh, dear, the the new Suicide Squad will consist of the characters King Shark who we've seen, uh, who was supposed to be in the first one, but wasn't for some reason. Uh, we've seen him on the Flash TV series. I doubt it'll look as good for some reason. And the other characters are Rat Catcher, Peacemaker, and, I'm not making this up, Mr. Polka Dot. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the inclusion of Mr. Polka Dot is so... Well, pretty- they got to kill one of them off. One of them's got to get killed off, and they're putting out the message right away that we're going to be a little bit lighter than what we've been doing before. So, I, I will give him this. He's described as a character who grows multicolored dots on his body that he can turn into fireballs or other weapons, but he's embarrassed about his awkward abilities. As he should be. Uh, um, yeah. Idris Elba, James Gunn, I'm signed on, even if it's a DC property. It's like that gives me more than enough hope to say, okay, I'll give this one a shot. And it it, it is the fact that we were talking about earlier and we've talked about it before, how Will Smith was just the love Will Smith, terrible fit for that character, the way they had him portrayed. He could have played Deadshot perfectly, but they didn't write it that way. (laughs) They had to write him like, oh, he's Will Smith. It's like stupid idiot DC. So thank you for putting in Idris Elba and hopefully they won't try to make him all warm and fuzzy because that would be incredibly dumb. So. I'll agree with that as well. Um, we'll see. We'll see if we survive polka dot. You know, speaking of things that don't make a whole lot of sense, moving over to Marvel briefly. Um, and we're combining it with something that I wasn't expecting. The WWE, because I'll, I'm going to tie this together. Earlier this week, the WWE posted a video where uh, their wrestler Nia Jax sat down with Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson, and they kind of interviewed each other. Which was, frankly, kind of weird. And it ended up with Brie talking about how she was trained as a stunt woman. So it's a lot of the same kind of thing that Nia Jax does in the ring. And I'm trying to figure out if this is really going to happen or not. Nia kind of seemed to have taken it personally and challenged her to a match. (laughs) Now, seeing as Nia, to my knowledge, doesn't have anything to do at WrestleMania, which is coming up soon. And they're still trying to push Captain Marvel. Maybe we've got a WrestleMania match going. We could. And Brie Larson, and probably a lot of people listening didn't really keep up with it that much. She seems like a rather slight young female. I mean, she's she's not a large musket. She's certainly not anything like me and Jack. That's yeah. for sure. However, she was talking about how she was squatting 400 pounds. <laughs> um, 
pulling or I can't remember now if she was pulling or pushing, but anyway, pulling or pushing her trainer's 5,000 pound Jeep, which I'm thinking maybe it was like a, an, a Hum 2, H2, because I don't think Jeeps were weigh 5,000 pounds, but whatever. Oh, no. But it's got wheels, still. admittedly, but still. Yeah. Um, so when she got into some pretty phenomenal shape, uh, who knows if she can do anything in a wrestling ring, but I mean, she's a hell of a lot stronger than she looks when you just look at her. So that be a possibility. Who knows? I just don't see Brie Larson as someone who'd be interested in doing anything like that. And when is WrestleMania coming up? Uh, April 7th. Which is is so it was a far less in, than a month. It would make sense if if Captain Marvel was coming out after WrestleMania or the same. Well, because it, I mean, it's still going to the Avengers movie, which is coming out it, April thirtieth. It's still that just seems kind of a kind of a weird thing. I'll agree, it, but it showed up, and I went. Uh, I think I'll put it in the show. Yeah, that's interesting for sure. But it's, it's the timing is kind of weird for promoting a movie that would have been out for a month at that point. But who knows? I just work here. <laughs> I, don't make up, I don't make up the stories. I just oh. pass them along. WWE being involved. I mean, you know, I'm surprised they're not bringing in Will Smith as Deadshot. There you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, also out of Marvel this week, Disney Pictures showed off new footage of Avengers Endgame and another movie that we'll get to in a minute. But we've got more Marvel stuff. Um, the Endgame stuff didn't really show much of anything that we didn't expect to be there. Yeah. They're not going to give away. <laughs> They're not going to give away much at this point. I mean, why should they? They don't need to. Everybody yeah, I mean, talking about it and has been since, since they saw the closing credits of infinity war. <laughs> so it's fun to see, you know, little bits and pieces, but uh, it's, it's a crazy hype, hype machine. And here we are, we're part of it and that's okay. But, it's very, very, I mean, I understand it's kind of frustrating in a way because you'd like to see more. But at the same time, I don't want to see enough to spoil the damn movie, which yeah. I'm really glad they don't do that because we've talked about, you've talked about it specifically <laughs> before. It's like, hey, I saw the whole movie in the trailer. Why bother to go? Exactly. At, at least they don't do that. So Mercifully. Yes. Uh, you had a, you said you had something else for Marvel that I had missed. Oh, just in general, talking about Captain Marvel. And last week you were talking about how uh, we were talking about how Rotten Tomatoes. This is so weird because you were talking about oh, Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. Right. should just ban the trolls. And they did literally like two days later. So thanks for listening to the show, Rotten Tomatoes. Not that we think that's actually what happened. <clears throat> but and I, I do. They're, they're our new sponsor. <laughs> check after the show. I'm, I'd love to be making I'd love for that to be real, but it's not Unless, Wouldn't that be wonderful? Unless you guys want to, hint, hint. Hint, hint. And I double-checked because we were talking in pre-pro, and I had one basic fact wrong. It's kind of a big fact. So this was at before they did the reset, before they cut off all the, the uh, audience reviews that were logged before the movie actually was released, which is what they've done. They've decided, oh, we're going to make sure that you've actually seen the movie before you write a review to help prevent all this crap. Well, they, they didn't hit the right button. And when they initially <laughs> released the reset, it actually wasn't reset. And then they realized quickly and removed it. But early on, and the audience reviews were 21%, as in only 21% of the audience liked <laughs> Capture Marvel on the first day of release because they hadn't fixed the troll problem. <clears throat> but they had more reviews at that point for Captain Marvel than Infinity War has had total the entire time it's been out. That kind of tells you that these aren't real reviews. Yeah. They've since been reset. They, I mean, they've eliminated the ones that were filed prior. It still doesn't have a, a good audience listing, but it's, it's a little better than it had been before. It's up to 51%, which is still incredibly low. But I did a little checking, and I also looked at <clears throat> Metacritic, which also allows audience reviews. And on Metacritic, it has... Eh, a fairly decent score overall from the critics, but a 2.8, and that's on a scale of 1 to 10, user score. In other words, the same thing as like a 28 on Rotten Tomatoes. And I looked through negative comments. There are 1,100 negative comments. Obviously, I'm not going to look through 1,100 comments. How but I looked through 20 of them, the first 20, and looked at the, re at the people who put down the reviews. Of the first 20, 12 have only done one review for Captain Marvel. How funny that it just happens that 
of the 20 negative reviews, the first 12 I came across, I'm sorry, 12 of the first 20 I came across, either gave it a zero or one as the only review they posted. Another four, so we're up to 16 now, another four had reviewed two movies in one case, in one case three. Of the well, three, guess, the other one was Black Panther that they didn't like either. Actually, the other one was Alita, which they do like because that's, that's, that's well, that's the little, the little game because they're hoping to boost the audience score for Alita because Alita is still out. So they're hoping people will go see Alita instead of going to see Captain Marvel, even though Alita is about a female superhero, but it's a female superhero who's a little more dependent on men. So this way, all the boys who mommy weaned too early won't cry because, oh, look, there's a strong woman and she's beating up a man and that hurts my Uh self-confidence. I I really don't understand this. I don't understand. Well, I do understand the mindset. They're, they're sad, (laughs) pathetic people. That's the mindset. But they're making America great again. Yes, they are. (laughs) And the fact that a woman is, can actually stand up for herself really hurts them. It's like, oh my God, that's just, you're so freaking pathetic. So out of those 20, there were two legitimate, and I'm guessing they were legitimate. They still could have been just trolling, but at least they had other reviews. So they've been on the site for more, more than, oh, I don't know, six hours. That's... And I looked back, and you know, you were talking about Black Panther, how it had some negative reviews, way too many negative reviews, and if that had possibly affected the box office. And I looked through, and... There are three movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe where there's a big discrepancy between the Rotten Tomato critic score and the audience score. Those are Black Panther, which got a 97 from the critics and only a 79 from the audience. The influence of the trolls. Uh, It's because they're dyslexic. Yeah, could be. We've got Captain Marvel, which and of course, this will change because it's just been a few days. And gradually, as the audience score goes up, it'll it'll adjust. But 79 for Captain Marvel compared to 52 from the audience. And the other one, which had a fairly large discrepancy, just happens to be Ant-Man and the Wasp. So you have black superhero, internet trolls, female superhero, internet trolls, female superhero co-star, internet trolls. Uh, It's, gee, that's funny how that happened. Mm -hmm. All these butthurt little boys can't stand the thought that, oh, they may be promoting women as equals. I'm like, (sighs) So my, my message is, do not pay any freaking attention to audience scores for any movie. Because if we're at the point now where, and they did it with Last Jedi, just ignore you know these, these generic scores. By all means, listen to friends, listen to, listen to us, that's an idea. But don't pay attention to these audience scores because they're getting skewed way out of proportion. It's absolutely, it's far worse than listening to the critics at this point. Because at least the critics are giving you an honest appraisal. And I'm not saying Captain Marvel is the best thing ever. I'm just saying people giving it a zero who haven't seen it because the concept of a strong woman hurts their manhood. Uh, yeah, ignore yeah. that crap. Actually, you mentioned Star Wars in the middle of that. I That's did. the other movie that they showed a few clips of. Woohoo! See? Segwaying back to our to, to the to the stuff. But here's what they showed. <laughs> Ready? Uh, Here's a list. Uh, we see a blockade runner in, a, in an abandoned looking hangar, an explosion that knocks over stormtroopers, Kylo Ren looking at Darth Vader's helmet, Ray, Finn, Poe, and Lando in the Falcon's cockpit, Ray with Chewie's bowcaster, and Finn in some abandoned looking ship interior. Ooh, that looks like a blockbuster to me, if anything ever. <laughs> Does it? It looks like we've already seen this, with the exception of the uh, brief clip of Lando on a screen. Yes, it, I was thinking that very same thing. I was like, huh, yeah, that sounds really familiar. It sounds like recycled footage to me. Yeah. That's, Just saying. It, whatever, but I mean, that seems really... Uh, and again, I get it. You know, you don't want to play the... You don't want to overplay your hand. And it's like, oh, look, here's everything in the movie. You don't want to be that stupid company, but... You've got to give people a reason to want to see it. That's kind of the point of a trailer, I thought. Well, I mean, they haven't even released the title for this movie yet, so right. that's coming soon. And, as and we we'll joke, let you know. Hopefully the title is the last one. Um, actually, also out of the Star Wars camp, Matt Smith, who was allegedly in this. Um, <laughs> and this is this is a very weird way to phrase it. In an interview with the L.A. Times, 
uh, he said, and, and listen to the wording on this, as far as I can tell, I'm definitely not in the movie. <clears throat> Does that mean he filmed something and they just, he, by the way, Matt, we cut your scene or, I mean, it's, it's, far, it's as far as I can tell. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's a, a little, weird way of phrasing it. That is a little strange. Anyway, wow. So his doctor, Dr. Who character, uh, recently was gender swapped. And yeah. now we move on to a story that about another movie franchise that's going to be gender swapped. Uh, this time it's rush hour. No, it has nothing to do with the band. I'm very disappointed. Um, yeah. yeah, the Jackie Chan and crap lost his name. Uh, the other one. Yes. The other one. Oh, I lost his name too. Oh, geez. As soon as you Chris, said, I will. Chris Tucker. Chris, Chris Tucker. Tucker. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Chris Tucker. That's the guy. I'm not sure I've seen him in anything since. No, I, I mean, no offense to you, Chris. And no, it's not because he's black. I, uh, Jeez, I, I was, I was starting to talk in his voice, but I couldn't picture his name. So anyway, yes. <laughs> that guy from the fifth element with the big phallic thing on his head. <laughs> yes. um, yeah. He's not going to be in this one. They've decided to uh, see if people would be interested in a rush hour where they swap the genders. Um, and he, here's, here's my thought on this. Just make the movie. And let us make the obvious connection. Don't even call it rush hour. Just let us go, oh, look, it's a gender swapped rush hour. And that be the end of it. And let us make up our own minds as to whether it's something we'd like to see. Can, can we not Can we not do that without just going, we're doing rush hour. Or, you know, It's like Ghostbusters or Ocean's 8 or whatever. What a concept. Except then you lose all the built-in, that what you hope is the built-in audience that wants to see rush hour again. I'd just like you to just make a damn good movie. <laughs> is, is that's, if you make a You're good so movie, funny. people will go, usually. It's funny, Rob. How long have you been doing this show, and you think that's actually what they try to do? I don't know. Sometimes they do, obviously. But yeah, all too often, it's like, here's a concept. This will make us money. Yeah. But uh, they have already said that there's an actress that they're really looking at to take over the Jackie Chan role. And I have seen her... I, I'm going to ask you this because I don't know. The actress's name is either BB Ling, BB Lee, or Lee BB. Damn it, I'm going to get this name right eventually. I apologize to you if you're listening. Bing Bing Lee or Lee Bing Bing. I've seen it as both. I know that the family name, which is in America and it's the last name, is Lee, which sometimes goes at the beginning, sometimes it goes at the end. I've seen it as both for her. And I'm wondering if Bing Bing is actually a real name, a nickname, an onomatopoeic sound effect. I'm asking. <laughs> honestly, it's – it's. That's I don't know. I honestly don't. Anyway, actually little... what threw me off is uh, – because you know who I'm talking about with, with Miss Bing Bing. Yeah, and she's a little um, older than I would She's have... 46. Exactly. She's a little older than what I would have expected to play. I mean Jackie Chan was probably already 50 by the time he did Rush Hour. Oh, but right. – I'm just surprised that they went with someone a little older. Nothing wrong with a 46 year old actress. I'm just talking no. about the role. So it's a very just, physical role. Like John, and obviously she can do a real physical thing at 46. I'm just surprised they aren't going younger because you want to franchise because that's all they want these days. It's just like they're not doing John Hamm as Batman because they want a younger version, despite the fact he'd be tremendous. So interesting. Yeah. And of course, these are just rumors so far, but that's true. Yeah, they said they're looking at getting her. Doesn't mean they got her yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, unlike Ryan Reynolds, who can do voiceovers for the rest of his life, he doesn't have to be in the Deadpool outfit, nor does he have to be in a Pikachu costume. Although <laughs> at the red carpet, would that not be awesome if he showed up for the Detective Pikachu red carpet thing in a Pikachu costume? He, I would be shocked if he doesn't. That's when I, <laughs> I, I knew the name Bing Bing Lee or Lee Lee, Lee Bing Bing. IMDb has it as Bing Bing Lee, so I'm thinking that's probably the correct way because that's usually how they roll. Uh, but she was in The Meg, which, you know, she was good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you, you mentioned the uh, – in pre-pro, you mentioned the Detective Pikachu trailer. I did. Which does – I've seen the new one, It and as someone who is v vaguely familiar with, with Pokemon, but nowhere near as much as my kids um, – oh. Say, it looks like it, it looks good, and the, peak, the, the the Pokemon actually look like they belong in this movie. I was going to say, you're vaguely familiar with Pokemon? Come on now. Co compared to my kids, I am 
not even close. Well, I understand that because they live and breathe Pokemon, whereas you only live Pokemon. Um, yeah, I, 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 that's I, I, I don't I, breathe them. I just snort them occasionally. And <laughs> Sorry. Pokemon tonight. Ooh, we just lost our family friendly status. Anyway, I agree. <laughs> they look perfect. <laughs> they look perfect in, in the trailer. They, they absolutely fit what Pokemon, at least my concept, your concept of what they should look like yeah. in a action movie. And they look like Pokemon. And the movie looks hilarious. It looks really, really good. When I first heard about this, I thought, oh, wow, what the heck are they doing? But it looks really, really good. We're looking forward to this very much so. It's going to be very interesting. Yes. Um, and actually, something else that's interesting, and I'll admit it's it's not movie-related. It is not TV-related. It's a computer thing, <laughs> but you can listen to soundtracks. So it's vaguely movie and TV related related. Um, and somehow I had missed this, but I'm going to announce it anyways, because I think a lot of people still use this program and no one, and, and we all thought it was dead technically. Uh, Winamp uh, was a magnificent MP3 player uh, for mainly for PCs, but you can get it for other operating systems. Uh, Mac amp. Guess what? That was for Macs. Huh. Anyway, the company was bought a few years ago and left us at Winamp version 5, and that was it. And we thought, it'll be dead. I still use it because it is a very good MP3 playing program. There's a new version of it. It apparently came out in November, and it you know snuck it out. I missed this. I'm very disappointed that I'd missed it, but I've got it now. And you know what? They added a little bit. It's good. Version 6 is on its way. Wow. So it, a resurrection of the... The software that, and this is their uh, catchphrase, that whips the llama's ass. I don't know why <laughs> that is their catchphrase. Uh, if you, I mean, you've you've got iTunes, right? Uh, I had iTunes in the past. I don't have yeah. iTunes anymore. I yes. hated iTunes. iTunes was a really big mess of a program. It was huge. Took up a lot of disk space. Winamp is tiny. Does the same stuff and works a lot better. There's a review for you. Winamp was absolutely the bomb back in the day, and apparently it is again. It, it is. Cool. It's spectacular. Um, so that's my brief review of something that doesn't really need to be in the show. But you know what? It's there anyway. <laughs> and since I'm producing, so there. If you want reviews of movies, come back on Friday. And guess what? We've got some really good reviews, including the aforementioned Captain Marvel movie, because one of us got to go see it. Which one? Tune in Friday to find out. In the meantime, get out and go see a movie. Captain, we're losing power in the warp engines. I think we should be leaving now. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Uh, and on that unusually harmonious bombshell, it is time to end. I am very disappointed. Man, we have a weird job. It's shameful, but uh, eh, it's a living. And like that, he's gone. Storm, that's the end.